and find the missing Asians and seek justice. Grab her. You are a racist. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that intro. Welcome to another DaVinci Resolve 17 editing tutorial and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to emulate film stock. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And also follow my social media accounts to see some awesome behind the scenes content. Now there are a couple of ways you can replicate film stock. And um, I'm going to be showing you two of those ways. I'm going to be showing you how to do it inside of the color tab with default LUTs that you get inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. And I'm going to be showing you another way where you're using a third party plugin. And that third party plugin is from Red Giant and that's Magic Bullet Looks. Now from what you saw in the beginning, Magic Bullet Looks is what I actually use to replicate the film stock. Um, but you can also do this inside of the color tab using the default settings. So let's open up DaVinci Resolve and let's start color grading. Okay, so I've opened up DaVinci Resolve 17 and I've given it a very simple color correction. Um, I actually made a tutorial about this last week, so if you want to check that out, I'm going to be putting a link over here, so definitely click that. So I've loaded it in. Now, all I want to do is I want to go over to the color tab. Okay, so we're in the color tab and I'm just going to go to this clip first. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to create a new node. So I can do that by hitting Alt S or just right clicking and that will create a new node. I'm just going to go over to the top left over here and I'm going to make sure we're in LUTs instead of gallery. And I'm just going to go down to film looks. And I'm just going to choose a color that I think looks good. Now this is very subjective, so it depends on maybe the scene that you're shooting on or what sort of look you're actually going for. Uh, but I, I like to go for something that complements the colors. So I like this one. I like the Fuji Film 351 3DI D65. And I'm just gonna click and drag it on. Now this is very contrasty and um, we can fix that by just bringing the contrast down a little bit to about, let's say, 0 0.7, 0.78. That's looking fairly good. It's still quite contrasty, but some film stocks um, is quite contrasty and some are very flat. So that just depends on what sort of look you're going for. We can also bring the lift up just a little bit as well. And then that's our film look there. Or we can go over to our key and then we can back it off a little bit in the key output. I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to add a new node and I'm going to add layer. So I've decided to create a new layer and I just want to fix the skin tones a little bit and also the reds um, just because sometimes the reds are very saturated and skin tones are very saturated so we can go in there and adjust it even further. So I'm just going to go to our qualifier. I'm going to make sure the bottom one is selected and I'm just going to select the skin and I'm just going to make sure I can see my selection. It's looking pretty good there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift the gamma into the reds just a little bit. And as you can see, it's just changing the skin tones. I'll just push it up as far as I can. We're just going to add just a little bit of red into the skin tones, but there are a few more elements to add into um, a film stock emulation. And that of course is creating film grain. There are a couple ways to do film grain. You can actually get stock footage of film grain and then you can just change the blend modes of that. Or if you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you can actually go into the open effects and we can scroll all the way down to uh, film grain into Resolve FX Texture or you can just type it in. I'm going to choose film grain and I'm just going to drag it onto the node. And then I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to go to 35mm. I like to use that as a starting point. And then I'm just going to adjust the texture. I can just choose grain only so I can see the grain itself. So I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to adjust the grain size just a little bit. Grain strength. And then also the softness as well. 
just a little bit and that's looking pretty good so I'm just going to uncheck that so now we've added some film grain into our clip it's also not about the film stock as well when you're recreating the film stock look especially if you're getting that 80s 70s look uh, it also goes into the lens that you're using a lot of the older vintage lenses had a thing called diffusion and basically the highlights in the clip the whites the brighter areas had a bit of a glow to it so let's just recreate that I'm just going to select our film grain node and I'm just going to hit alt s and I'm going to create a new node and I am going to put a glow add a glow and as you can see by default you can see there's quite a bit of a difference when I add a glow um, this is a bit too intense so let's just adjust that I'm just going to select the output and I'm going to choose shiny regions for now I'm just going to just change the threshold of the regions and I'm going to make it a bit more it's just because I don't want a lot of the image to have um, some diffusion on it uh, so I'm just going to change that back to glowing image then now you can see that there is a bit of a glow and we can also adjust the strength and brightness as well so let's just crank it up just so we can see what it's doing and then I'm just going to adjust the spread and I'm going to bring the spread down just a little bit I don't want the diffusion to be covering a lot of the image I kind of want it to be just around the edges just a little bit so I'm fairly happy with that we can also go into our editing timeline and we can add in film scratches if we want to the other way I'm going to show you is probably my favorite way because when it comes to film stock and uh, color grading in general I like to keep things um, fairly condensed I don't want to have too many nodes open I like to keep things as simple as possible so this next technique I'm going to be showing you I'm going to be using Red Giant's Magic Bullet looks I'm not sponsored by them um, I've had this on my computer for a few years now and I've used it here and there and when I was um, color grading this short film I actually found this to be quite useful so I wanted to just do a little tutorial on how I use this plugin so I'm going to make sure I'm in open effects and I'm going to scroll all the way down to our magic bullet looks and I'm just going to click and drag it into our node and I'm just going to edit the look and as you can see this window pops up and there's quite a lot of looks that you can choose from in here but today we're going to be using color film stock so we're just going to use color film stock and as you can see when we hover over it we can see our film stock and we can see what it's doing to the image by previewing it now I I like Fujifilm F125 I'm not going to worry about four-way color um, just because you, you don't really need it because if you're replicating film stock I find a lot of these plugins have done a really nice job at replicating the color of the film stock and we're just going to be simply adding in different elements what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about this I'm just going to go over to lens vignette and I'm just going to right click and delete just because I want to see um, the whole image and not have things on the edges going to black and fading off so I want it to be fairly clean the main thing we can change is we can go into the film negative and film print and we can change it there if you want to if we're not happy with this look or if you want to try other looks you can also change a few other things like color temperature and contrast and all of that sort of stuff by default this will already have grain put onto the image so I'm just going to adjust the grain just a little bit just so it's a little bit bigger and then I'm going to go to the film print and I'm just going to do the same thing as well you can also change the film prints as well here so we can go in and have a look if you want to change it um, and then I'm just going to click on matte and as you can see when I selected matte nothing comes up that's because uh, we don't have anything selected in our matte so to find the tools you just hover over the tools click into tools and now you can see our options for matte you can also go over to the lens and have a look in there if you want to but uh, for this tutorial we're just going to be looking inside of the matte section by default you have diffusion which is what we want so I'm going to select that and I'm just going to 
minimize the fusion, make sure the fusion selected, and let's just disable it. It's pretty much doing the exact same thing as the glow. So by default, it's at 30%, and we can decrease the size as well. And I'm just going to bring that down just so it's going onto the black collar just a little bit. We don't want to do it too much. And that's actually looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. And then I'm just going to uh, click OK and I'm good with that. You can also adjust the strength as well if you want to. But when it comes to film stock emulation, I like to have the full strength of it. There's also a few other things you can do to make this better. Now, if you have a full timeline of clips that you've added this effect to, what you can do is you can change um, at the top here, we can change it to timeline. So now when we add in nodes, everything is, it's going to be affecting the whole timeline. So what I did in this trailer is I created some flicker, which is that sort of like flickery look. Um, I'll just show you in a second. So I'm just going to right click and I'm just going to add a corrector node. And I'm just going to, whoops, just add these points in. I'm just going to make sure we're in open effects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add flicker edition and I'm just going to put it in this node here. And let's just quickly play that back. So you can see it's quite dramatic. Uh, we're going to do some adjustments so that's our flickering I just want to recreate the flickering of the film projector so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the speed so it's much quicker there's looking good and I'm just going to bring the range down a fair bit because I don't want there to be a huge spike in um, brightness and going back down to where it's supposed to be at I just want it to be just a little jitter basically so if I can bring the range down to about maybe 0 0.02 just so it's very subtle you don't want it to be too in your face you just want it to be kind of there I actually haven't added a lot in on this clip but uh, these first two clips we've got our flicker so yeah that's how you do a very simple film stock emulation inside of DaVinci Resolve I hope you found this video helpful if you did don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.